Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we are talking about the classification of matter. So here we are getting into some new content, stuff that you guys probably haven't seen before, so you want to make sure you're taking really good notes today as you watch your lesson. So our essential question today is going to be what is matter? We're going to define it and we're going to learn how to classify matter. So without further ado, let's jump in and get started. So matter is anything that has mass and takes up space, AKA has volume. So it has to have mass and it has to have volume. So it has to take up space somehow. Now mass can exist in three states, either as a solid, as a liquid, or as a gas. Now a really good example of a substance that can exist in these three states is water. So if we think about water, um, when it's frozen, it exists as a solid. When it's at room temperature in a fluid state, it's a liquid. And then water can be heated up, turn into water vapor, and exist as a gas. Now, water is not the only example of matter. Everything is matter. Your matter, your computer is matter, the desk that you're sitting at right now is matter. But water is just an example of matter that can exist in all three of those states. So to help us classify matter today, we're going to use this really helpful flow chart that's going to help us ask a few questions and then categorize the different types of matter. So the first question we're going to ask ourselves when we're looking at something is, can it be physically separated? So if you're looking at a substance, if it can be separated, that's going to help us move on to our first classification. So if the answer is yes, it can be separated out, so it has multiple components, that's a mixture. So a mixture is two plus substances um, that are mixed together. So examples of this would be like a salad or a soda. Now soda is a mixture because you just think of the ingredient list. So like soda has like food coloring, um, sugar, natural flavor, artificial flavor, all those things are separate ingredients, so it's a mixture. If it cannot be physically separated, then it is a pure substance. So it's one type of particle. And examples of this would be like gold and carbon dioxide. Now back over on the mixture side. So let's say we determine something is a mixture. Well, we can classify it a little bit better based on some more questions we can ask ourselves. So the first question we can ask is, is the composition uniform? So that just means is the composition of the mixture the same throughout? If the answer is yes, it's a homogeneous mixture. So an example of that would be soda. What um, I mean by that is that, like if you think about drinking a soda, it's it doesn't have like lumps in it. It doesn't have a texture. It's one smooth, continuous texture, which I don't think I would want <laughs> to drink a lumpy soda. Um, so it's a smooth, continuous texture. So it's homogenous. And just remember, homo means same. And these are also known as colloids. So a homogenous mixture is a colloid. Now, if the composition is not uniform, so meaning there are some um, different textures within the mixture. That's a heterogeneous mixture. And an example of that would be like a salad. So if you think of a salad, a garden salad, it's got lettuce, cucumber, tomato, croutons, maybe some onion. All of those are different textures that you could pick out and easily physically separate it. They all have different textures and it's not uniform. Hetero means different. So heterogeneous just means different throughout. And these are called suspensions. So it's a suspension if it's heterogeneous. Now back over to our pure substance. There's a couple more ways we can classify a pure substance. So we're going to ask ourselves, can it be chemically decomposed? So on a chemical level, can the chemical bonds be broken? And can we break down that substance even further? If the answer is yes, it's a compound. So it's made of two or more elements. So like carbon dioxide is a compound because it's made of carbon and oxygen. Now we haven't gotten to the periodic table yet. So the examples that we do now are going to be pretty intuitive, very easy. But if you have any questions, you can definitely let me know. 
Now, if it cannot be chemically decomposed, it's just an element. So it's got one identical atom. So these would be things like gold, silver, carbon, oxygen, anything on the periodic table of elements. If it's just one single type of element that is an element, it's a pure substance. It's not bonded with anything else. Okay, so matter can be classified in these ways, and we are going to practice with that today. So just a few more bits of information for you about mixtures. Remember, colloids are homogenous. They have medium-sized particles. There's something called the Tyndall effect, which is basically just if you take a laser and you, si you shine a laser or a light through a colloid, um, you'll be able to see the continuous beam of light through it um, because it's being that light is being scattered by the particles in the mixture. Um, the particles do not settle in a colloid, so it's smooth. Remember, there's no like separation of textures. So examples of this would be like milk, soda, um, and they're smooth. So like if you think about if you're drinking it, it you're not going to get different textures in your mouth or anything like that. This is a video of the Tyndall effect. I'll post it on Canvas because if I play it here, the, the audio won't sound. Um, but he basically takes a laser through the different types of mixtures and he shows you the Tyndall effect there. So I'm going to pass over that. So we have our colloids that are mixtures. So a colloid is a mixture. It's just a homogeneous mixture. Then our suspensions are also mixtures, but remember they're heterogeneous. So this is where you're going to have those different textures. So they have larger particles. They also have the Tyndall effect, and the particles tend to settle. So examples of this would be like fresh squeezed lemonade. Lemonade has particles in it, so it's made of sugar, water, and lemons. But if you fresh squeeze lemonade, sometimes the pulp of those lemons will get into the drink and will settle at the bottom. So when you take a swig of it, you can feel that pulp in your mouth. So it's not, it's not a one continuous smooth mixture. So that would be also known as a suspension. So suspensions are heterogeneous. They have those different textures. Another good example of a suspension that's really popular right now is like the boba tea. So if you're a boba tea fan where you go and you get like the sweetened milk tea that has the little boba beads at the bottom, like the tapioca pearls, that would be a suspension because it's all one drink and it's all mixed together, but the texture of the pearls is different and it settles out at the bottom. And here are some examples of different mixtures. Um, so mayonnaise would be a colloid because it's smooth throughout. There's no separation. There's no difference of texture. Muddy water would be a suspension. So muddy water would be mud grit suspended in water. And if we think about muddy water, mud typically has some sediment in it. So you can feel the rough, the difference of the texture between the mud and the water. Fog would be a colloid because fog is just essentially a cloud, a low-lying cloud. So it's all water vapor. And so it would be considered a colloid because it's smooth, the same texture throughout. Salt water is a solution because it's water and salt. And then Italian salad dressing, that would be a suspension. So if you've ever seen Italian uh, salad dressing or use it, um, there's a lot of herbs and seasonings in Italian salad dressing, and when you shake up the bottle to get it all mixed up, you can see the different spices and stuff floating in it, and so there's different textures, and because it's not smooth throughout, that makes it heterogeneous, which makes it a suspension. Okay, so what I want you to do is write down in your notebook, we're going to do check our knowledge really quickly. Um, I'm going to show you some things on the slides, and what I want you to do is write down the name of the substance, and then I want you to classify it either as a mixture or a pure substance, and then if it's a mixture, is it homogeneous or heterogeneous, aka a colloid or a suspension, and if it's a pure substance, is it an element or a compound, okay? So since, you know, we're not in class, I'm trusting you to pause the video, do your best to use your notes to figure out, and then when you play the video, I'll give you guys the answer, okay? So here we go. 
water. So go ahead and pause, write down water in your notebook, and then try to classify water. And I'll give you a hint. The molecular formula of water is H2O, so it has hydrogen and oxygen. All right, so water is going to be a pure substance, okay, because it's made of only elements. But because it's made of two elements, so it's hydrogen and oxygen, this is going to be a compound. So it's a compound of two different elements. So water is a pure substance and it is a compound. Next we have salt and salt is sodium chloride. So similar to water, it's Na and Cl. So two, two elements bonded together. So go ahead and pause and see if you can classify salt. Salt is also going to be a compound because again, it's two elements that are bonded together and therefore it can be chemically decomposed, but it can't be physically separated. So you would not be able to yourself take you know, salt in your hands and separate the salt, but chemically it could be decomposed into its sodium and chlorine components. All right, salt and pepper. This one's a little bit different. So go ahead, write down salt and pepper. Pause and see if you can figure out what this is. All right, so salt and pepper are two different seasonings. Um, so this is definitely going to be a mixture because it's two or more substances. So salt and pepper is not a pure substance because salt is its own and pepper is its own. But this would be able to be physically separated, right? So salt and pepper would be a mixture. And this would also be a heterogeneous mixture because they're two different substances. Um, the texture is the same. It's, it's pretty similar. Um, so it could be a little confusing because we might say it's homogenous. But pepper is a little bit more fine and salt is a little coarser. So we would say this would be a heterogeneous mixture. Therefore, it would be a suspension. And finally, milk. Milk was an example that we used earlier. So this one should be easy if you would just write down milk, pause, and then you can go back in your notes and classify milk. Okay, and milk is a mixture. So it's made of, there's definitely sugar in there in the form of lactose. There's fat in milk, there's protein, there's water in milk. Um, so it's made of definitely two or more substances, but it's the same texture throughout. It's smooth. I mean, unless you got expired milk, I would hope you're not drinking chunks in your milk. Um, so it is a mixture and it's homogeneous because it's the same texture throughout. And then that would make it a colloid. So you would classify milk as a colloid. And that's it. So we're going to do a little bit more practice with this today in your independent practice. As long as you have that chart with you, um, you will be able to go through and classify the different types of substances. You're going to do a lab where you watch a video um, of different substances and classify them either as colloids, um, suspensions, compounds, or pure substances. But as always, if you need help with anything at all, let me know and I will be more than happy to help. All right, that's all for today, guys. Hope you have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.